Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I am going to be restoring some new antique cast iron. Um, I recently purchased four new pieces and I'm going to take you guys along while I restore two of them. Um, one is a Lodge Cornbread skillet and the other is a number 12 unmarked Wagnerware skillet. So I'm going to be restoring those two today and I thought that I'd bring you guys along and um, enjoy the process. So uh, let's go ahead and I'll show you those two skillets. This is the number 12 unmarked Wagnerware skillet that we are going to go ahead and restore. And this is the Lodge Cornbread skillet. Um, both are in pretty good condition. They're really dirty. Lots of grime in there. Hard to see the sun shining through the window. Um, but you can see it's pretty filthy. But all in all, this one's in really great condition. Some stuff on there. And a little bit of surface rust. But no big deal. If you're not familiar with um, this skillet, this was made by Lodge. Um, you can tell the Lodge one because of the hole down the center. Um, originally, I do believe that this was invented by BSNR, Birmingham Stove and Range. And um, in the 1980s, Lodge actually bought the patent for the cornbread skillet and began manufacturing these. Now I have heard that it's possible these were made before that, even though they didn't have a patent. Um, to make these, but they carve, they uh, made the hole in the middle and may have been able to get around the patent beforehand, but they did end up buying that patent from BSNR when they went out of business. Pretty awesome to restore that, but this is what I'm really excited about. Um, this is a 14 inch skillet and you can see there is some surface rust in there, but nothing bad. Definitely needs a cleaning. And let me flip it over and show you the back real quick. So here is the back side of the pan. 14 inch skillet made in the USA. And it does have a B down here on the handle. So for all four of them, I did pay $54 with tax and the buyer's premium. So I think I got a pretty good deal on that. The skillet, the 12 in, or the number 12 skillet alone is worth much more than that. So I'm pretty happy all in all with the purchase. Um, I really only keep and cook on American cast iron. Um, I just love American made products. Let's go ahead and get started with this restoration and... Uh, Hopefully it doesn't take as long as the last one. If you've seen my video restoring the small block Griswold, that took forever. And in the end, it ended up being a cracked skillet, but uh, I do, I have cooked on it twice and I will probably keep that one at least for a while because um, it, it's an amazing pan. I love it. So anyways, let's go ahead and start restoring. So I'm going to start out by washing these with some hot soapy water and just getting them as clean as possible. a little bit of texture to that rust it's not quite it's a little bit deeper than the surface right there I can definitely feel it and it's not coming off so far so I don't typically use soap on my cast iron occasionally I do if I need to for some unknown reason but you know sometimes it's not going to damage your pan or anything like that but I do like to use soap when I get a new skillet and I don't know what's on it or where it's been or anything like that. 
And once I put it in the electrolysis tank, it's going to have all of this outer coating removed anyways. We have this very old vintage 1970s sink in our kitchen still, and it can be a little bit of a challenge to wash larger pieces of cookware. So this one is all cleaned up. The back looks really, really good, but the rust is still there. Kind of hard to see with the lighting, sorry about that. Um, so we'll dry this off and there is some rust in there, but I don't think it's bad enough to cause any pitting. So let me wash the other one real quick. Alrighty, so here's this one. We're gonna get this one all clean. I might use a couple different brushes to wash this to really get into these little pointed areas of the cornbread things. <laughs> Here is my electrolysis tank. If you guys watched my last video about restoring my other cast iron skillets, you already seen that. Um, so I'm not really going to go into detail about the setup. If you want to know more about that in particular, you can check out that last video about cast iron. Um, I just cleaned my two anodes over there and got it hooked back in and I'm going to go ahead and hook these skillets up. Um, how I'm going to do that is my hook has two two little hooks so i'm going to hook one going um, to the left and one going to the right here's how i have them put in i've got one going off to the left one going off to the right and then i'm just going to hook them onto my piece of wood here to keep my hanger above water and then i will connect my negative to my hook and I'm all ready to go ahead and start this up. Plug it in. I will leave this in for the rest of the day. It's kind of late already. It's almost time for dinner. So, um, like I said in my last video, I don't really keep it running during the night or when I'm not around. So I'll just keep this in until, I don't know, 10 or 11 tonight, and then I'll see how it is then. So I just pulled these out of the electrolysis tank and they've been in there for about five hours. So I am going to go ahead and wash these. I guess I'll do that one first because it's a lot lighter. But you can see that uh, we got a lot of crud waiting there to get brushed off. All right. Alright, as I'm washing this one, I just started washing this one, and I am noticing that the handle from about here to the end looks like an awfully curious color. I don't know if you can see it on the video, not really, but in person, the end of this is looking really red. It almost looks like possible heat damage to the end. If you can see how it looks kind of red. In person it looks quite red. So we'll see. I don't know how the handle would get heat damaged all by itself, but I'll keep an eye on that. Alright, so this one is done and it is completely down to bare iron. So it is wet right now and I'm just putting it on my stove to get all these little grooves and everything all dry so I don't have to worry about getting my towel and all of these grooves and dry it. I'll just dry it here on a low medium heat currently to get that all dried up and then we'll get some oil on that. But meanwhile, I'm gonna go and work on this big boy. So it looks like it's pretty dirty. Lots of, lots of grime ready to come off. 
So I'm going to go ahead and scrub this and see how close we are with this one. All right, so I've got this heated up and it's wanting to try to rust on me. And uh, so I'm just getting some oil on it while it's warm. It's not so hot that I can't touch the handle, but I can feel the heat. The handle definitely looks like it is possibly heat damaged. This, this top portion, maybe like an inch and a half of the end of the handle. It's just a very kind of deep red, almost purplish color. Um, it just has kind of a hue, like a purplish red hue to it. I've never actually seen heat damage in person. I've seen pictures of it and things online. So that's why I think it is, but I don't have firsthand experience with it. But I want to get this oiled up. So I took a break wash from washing the other pan. And I'm just using avocado oil. That's what I have. I only really keep avocado oil or olive oil. Well, I have coconut oil too, but um, out of those three, I prefer avocado oil. I used to use nothing but olive oil, and it worked great for me. Some people have bad things to say about it. But I liked it. It worked well for me. But we started using avocado oil when we were on the keto diet. And so I have that in stock. And I like its, I like its high smoke point. And uh, it makes a really nice seasoned finish. So, all right. So that is all oiled up. It's got a lot of excess oil on there. So I will come back and wipe that off. But... I'm not real worried about it right now. I'm going to flip it over and get the other side all oiled. So, and I always use the same rag. This is uh, one of my flower sack towels, and it was white at one point, <laughs> but it became my cast iron seasoning cloth. And I just keep it in the drawer most of the time. Every now and again, I either wash it or replace it. But, so there's the back. It looks really nice. And the front, I just got to wipe off the excess. I would show you the handle, but I just don't have good enough lighting to show you the color. It's not real strong now with the oil over it, but it definitely has a red tint to it in person here. All right, so I got that oiled up and then I wiped off as much of the excess as I could and I'm just putting it back on my burner on a medium heat to get it nice and hot. And uh, just kind of, that's what I do after I cook. I will clean the pan, dry it, Get it warmed up on the stove till it's, I don't know, right around 2.30 or so. I don't take the temp of the pan or anything, but I've just grown accustomed to uh, what it looks like, what it feels like if I touch it. Is the handle warm? Uh, stuff like that. So um, once it's nice and warm, I oil it and then I put it back on the heat and get it nice and hot over a medium heat. Um, I never really cook over a medium heat especially on my electric cooktop. Not a good idea. You could damage your cast iron, um, especially on the electric stoves. So you got to be real careful with that. Um, so medium heat, and I'm just going to get it hot. If you look real close, um, a lot of times you'll see the oil start to um, smoke a little bit. So, and that's when I turn it off. So I do that. Um, Every time I cook, I do that, and I'm just doing it right now because I, I don't want to um, season this in the oven until I get my other piece done, and I can do them both together. That way I just feel better about the electricity. Alright, so back to this one. 
Sometimes when there's a lot of stuff, I go ahead and scrape with my little plastic lodge scraper to get some of the crusty stuff off so I don't get it in my sponges and stuff. But, ew, look at all that stuff. So I'm going to just continue to scrub this one. I don't think this one's going to be ready yet. But we made some good progress. Alright, so after it's been washed, this is what it looks like. It's not quite finished. You can see I still have a lot of seasoning on the helper handle and on the sidewall here. Um, the bottom's fairly clean. A little bit of scrubbing and I could probably get that off. But I figured why kill myself when I know it needs to go back in the electrolysis tank. But you probably can't see because my lighting's not real great. But uh, you can see the beautiful mill, milling lines there in the pan. I'll have to get a close-up of that during better daylight hours. It's too dark in here. So this is what the back is looking like. Back of the handle the sides so this side was the side facing away from the anode and this was the side facing toward the anode so this time when i put it back in my tank i'm going to flip it the other way so that the other side is close because this one is bare metal already i do have some uh, still flaking off there that I could probably scrub off but I'm just gonna put it back in because I know I'm not gonna be able to get all this off by hand. Alright so I've got the um, cornbread skillet sitting on the stove cooling off. I'm not going to put it in the oven and do seasoning yet because like I said I want to do both of the skillets at the same time so I'm not wasting energy just using one pan. Um, since I know I have to do the other one. I think that the other one will be done tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it out into my electrolysis tank for a couple hours yet tonight. And I will um, wash it. Before I go to bed, I'll wash it, dry it, and put some oil on it for the night. And then tomorrow, um, I'll just give it a quick wash off all that oil again. And put it back in my electrolysis tank. And I'll just leave it there probably the majority of the day. And we'll check on it at that point. This is what it looks like. The inside is pretty well finished, but the outside I don't think is. And I'm not sure about the handle either. So I'm going to go ahead and wash it and see how it goes. And today I did some baking and uh, I did use this cornbread skillet. Um, Earlier today, I made a couple loaves of um, zucchini bread in my cast iron lodge um, baking loaf pans. And so I thought it was a good, a good opportunity to season this. So I put that in there for an hour with the zucchini bread. And uh, then I used it to make cornbread. And uh, it worked really well for cornbread. So, as you can see, it's looking really good. It's nice and dark. Um, I do believe that the end of the handle is heat damaged. Um, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but about this much of the end, for whatever reason, has a reddish tint to it. And it doesn't go away. There, you can see it pretty good right there. See how red it looks? I don't know how the just the end of the handle would have been heat damaged, but there is no damage on the pan itself. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's nice and black and um, doing great. So anyways, that is the status of that pan. And I'm going to go ahead and wash that other skillet. Oh, and I wanted to show you the back of the skillet, too, before I started scrubbing at it. A lot of it feels pretty well stuck on there yet. So I may um, put some lye on the back of this overnight and see if that helps. But it's kind of a stubborn ring there on the back. 
the side walls are all down to bare iron so I'm gonna scrub it and see how it goes all right here it is after some elbow grease the inside is all done and the outside is so close it's so close as you can see there's a few spots it's kind of got polka dots this is some staining there's nothing on the metal here this dark stuff is still seasoning but it kind of has this big black stain here yet where it was stubbornly stuck on all right and this end here has quite a bit from about here to here it's pretty thick yet so I am going to go ahead and take this out to the garage and spray some oven cleaner on it and put it in a garbage bag and let it sit overnight and sometime tomorrow I will check on it and see if we are ready yet or not I just took the pan out of the garbage bag with the um, oven cleaner and it looks like it is completely done so I'm going to go ahead and put my rubber gloves on and wash this off and check it out and then hopefully we'll be ready for seasoning after that all right I just finished washing the pan and yes it is all down to bare metal it is ready to be seasoned there is some staining here but there is no seasoning left on there it's just kind of stained it's a little bit wet here because my counter is all wet but this is ready for seasoning but first I want to do one more cleaning with it because I have used cleaning products on it now I just want to make sure that I get all of that residue off dish soap tends to leave a residue on everything and also because I used the oven cleaner I just want to make sure that the pores of the pan are clean before I go and start seasoning over top of it so I'm just going to pour some salt in here and use my favorite little scrubby brush that I showed you guys in the last video and I'm just gonna give it a quick scrub down and then a real good rinse so you can use whatever salt you want um, the coarser the salt the better but I really don't have any coarse salt this is just regular old salt and my favorite scrubby and I'm just gonna scrub it for a bit So we are officially clean and ready to season this pan. So all I did was, as you've seen, um, scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed with my little scrubby brush and some salt. I did it on the inside and outside and then I rinsed thoroughly with warm water and then I towel dried it and we're at the stove because we are ready to get the oven going and get this seasoning. So I'm going to go ahead and set my oven to 230 degrees and I'm going to set my pan inside and it is going to slowly preheat with my oven to that temperature and then we will check back here in a second. All right so while I wait for my pan to preheat in the oven um, I just want to kind of explain what I do when I um, season my cast iron. So first of all people are always discussing and debating what is the best oil to use when you are seasoning a cast iron pan? Well, in my opinion, the best is whatever works for you. Uh, there's a lot of people who say um, certain oils are good, certain oils are bad. I personally have not used all oils, so I can't tell you um, exactly which one is the best. Um, but I have used a few and they've all worked 
pretty much the same. <laughs> so I typically use, I used to use nothing but um, olive oil because that's all I use, you know, had in my home. Um, now I have avocado oil in my home all the time as well. So I actually have switched probably about a year and a half ago, I switched to using avocado oil. I do really like the avocado oil. It works great for me, but um, lots of oils work for lots of people. So decide what you have on hand regularly in your pantry and go from there. Uh, I don't use certain oils because I don't want certain oils um, in my food. So if I wouldn't have soy in my food, if I don't consume soy, I'm not going to use some kind of soybean oil on my pan. If I don't eat uh, GMO products, I would probably not want to go with a canola or some kind of corn oil, right? I want to try to find uh, something that I have on hand all the time and that I don't mind being in my food. So um, anyways, so that's that. And then um, people always ask, well, what temperature for X oil? What temperature for Y oil? You know, um, every oil is pretty much the same. <laughs> so uh, oil will all polymerize at 350 degrees if left in the oven long enough. So it's not super important. Uh, everybody, you know, a lot of people will really stress that you need to get over the smoke point of the oil to season a pan, and that's 100% not true. You do not have to get over the smoke point. Are there benefits to getting over the smoke point? Yeah, your pan will turn blacker if you go over the smoke point of the oil. So if you want your pan to be really black and beautiful in that way, and that's important to you, then definitely go above the smoke point of whatever oil that you're using. Um, whatever oil you're using, just go onto a search engine on the internet and type in smoke point of X oil and it will tell you or there will be some answers there that will pop up. I don't know the smoke point of every oil. Um, I personally don't go above the smoke point on any oils these days. I used to with um, olive oil. I used to go five degrees above the smoke point of olive oil, but uh, I've just come to learn and recognize that that's not necessary. So I typically, with my avocado oil, um, now it depends if you have extra virgin avocado oil or, you know, refined olive oil or avocado oil. So uh, you might have an avocado oil that has a, about a 500 degree um, smoke point. So you would want to go 505 to get over that smoke point. I don't do that. I There's my oven. I never go over 500 degrees in my everyday cooking. So I'm not going to put it in my oven at that temperature for no reason. Um, I am, I sometimes just do 350 degrees for an hour and it works great. My pans don't get as dark as quickly. They do turn black from cooking. So your best seasoning is gonna come from using your pan. The more you cook with, the more carbon is built up in your polymerized oil and it's going to be darker and better and stronger and last longer than any amount of seasoning in the oven. So. People will tell you, you know, do the oven an hour, you know, and then repeat it six, seven, eight, nine, ten times and and then cook on it. And I just, I've done that <laughs> when I first started using cast iron many years ago. I would put it through three, four or five times before I used it. And then I recognized that that is not necessary. I do now just one cycle through the oven and then boom, I'm cooking on it and I'm cooking and cooking and cooking on it. So the more use it gets, the better it is. There's really no reason to go over and over and over in the oven, just use the pan. So anyways, we're at 230 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that pan out onto my stovetop. And now that it's nice and warm, I'm gonna go ahead and rub my oil on. It's good to heat up your pan either by putting it in a lower temperature in your oven 
um, or just heating it up slowly on your slow stove top until it's a little bit hot and then um, go ahead and wipe some oil on thin um, yeah you when you warm up the pan the pores are going to open up and accept an oil a lot better so that is why we heat up our pans first so I'm gonna go ahead and get my pot holder here and we're going to take this pan out I'm just going to pour some oil in my pan and rub it around I wish I could film this but this pan is super heavy and I need both hands to flip it over so I just use my cloth and rub it around but I'm gonna go ahead and do both sides and then I'll get right back here all right I just finished wiping the inside and the um, underside of the pan and at this point it should look shiny but it, there shouldn't be enough oil that it's running all over the place um, the key is thin even coats um, if you put too much on and try to season quick and by thinking that you're going to do a quicker job if you just put a ton of oil on that's not how it works it's going to peel and chip off and wear off and it's not going to be a good lasting seasoning so thin coats if you get too much oil on keep wiping it off with your cloth until it just has a nice thin coat looks real shiny and nice all right, so I'm ready to put this in. I changed my temperature on my oven to 450 degrees. And I'm gonna throw this in the oven and set my timer for an hour. All right, the pan is upside down on the middle oven rack. So I just turn it upside down um, in case any oil does run off as it heats up that it won't pool on bottom. And I set my timer for one hour so I'll see you guys back here in a bit this is after one hour in the oven at 450 All right, that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed coming along and seeing how I restore cast iron. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.